Well, now in the government's report into the live animal trade, Western Australia supplies 85% of Australia's live sheep exports. Tony Seabrook is president of the WA Pastoralists and Graziers Association and he joins me via Skype from York in Western Australia. Tony Seabrook, welcome. Uh, what's your reaction to this report? Well, all we ever asked was for the science to prevail and this report has done exactly that. It's very complex, it's very well detailed it makes recommendations that, that will have to have a huge impact on the welfare of animals and uh, we're very happy with what's happened. Uh, it will come at a cost, but this is a trade that's absolutely so important for West Australians that the cost is something that we will just bear. Mm. Well, let's talk about that cost. Under these recommendations, sheep numbers will be reduced by nearly 30% in the hottest months. What's that going to do to your members' profits? Because I don't know how many ships they, they are able to bring over to the West to work the trade and whether we'll get sufficient numbers over there to satisfy the market. But there's no doubt whatsoever that if a ship is, is loaded to a lower density, uh, the cost of running a ship will remain the same and so there will be a cost. And whether that's borne by the exporter or whether it's borne in the marketplace, only time will tell. But this trade is so important to the West that, uh, and, and it's so important, I guess, for our, our social licence to make people confident that we can do this extremely well. But if these are the recommendations, then we need to apply them with vigour and rigour and make certain that every voyage is successful. And that's, that's the aim of the report. Well, the RSPCA, though, says that even with more space and with inspectors and vets on board, sheep deaths are still inevitable. Is there an acceptable number of sheep deaths in the course of these journeys as far well, as the livestock trade is concerned? Yeah, look, there's a rabid element within the animal welfare lobby that would not accept anything. And I'm, I'm certain there are vegans in there that would like to shut down the whole of the, of the meat industry if they possibly could. Um, deaths occur. They occur on farms. They occur out in the wild, in, in the bush, animals. It just, it happens. And we have events here that, that are unavoidable, a, a very cold snap. You know, things happen. You'll never, ever be able to say that no sheep die. But the concept of that damn footage that they keep wheeling out again and again and again about the one voyage where the disaster happened as though this is the case with every voyage is unreasonable and, and certainly not fair to the industry. Um, if animals do, do, do die on the journey, they won't die like that. Now, I've been up to our sheep yards and found animals on the, in the yards. They, they, it happens. So we can't say that none will. But the, the level, the acceptable level here is so low that, that you can't in any way hold up. I guess people are concerned that that footage, that horrific footage, is, as you say, wheeled out because that was an example of what happened on one ship. And the concern is the worry that that was going on on other ships where there were no cameras. Um, every single death on a ship is reportable. The fact with this journey was that it, it involved more than the 2%. That has now been dropped down to 1%. So, and, and we are mostly, most of the ship journeys now well under 1% anyway, and the last journey across, it was under a quarter of a percent. But look, the, the way that was portrayed is that every single ship on, sheep on that ship suffered like that. Absolutely untrue. The majority of the sheep on that ship had a very good voyage. It was a hot spot on the ship. I think a water pipe burst and a whole lot of things didn't turn out. It wasn't even meant to be in that port when it happened. So there's a whole lot of things there that make, make this a complete outrider. And it's wrong and unfair to the industry to keep on wheeling out that same footage and using it in the way it's being used. And Tony Seabrook, you went on board the Mesura, the live animal export ship that docked at Fremantle, I understand, after the Awasi Express. Under these new recommendations, would that ship be allowed to sail? There's nothing wrong with the ship. Uh, we're talking loading densities here and the recommendation is for even lower densities. Um, what I saw on that ship was completely different to what the Minister McTiernan actually reported. She had some very uh, derogatory things to say. That journey was one of the longest journeys that our ships travel on, and that went to northern Turkey, 23-day voyage. The loss rate on that was incredibly low, less than half of 1%. Um, and it wasn't, if they died, they didn't die in the way the film footage showed. So all of the, the public imagery that was sort of uh, bound around that ship and when it left, I'm quite certain that a lot of people would have liked to have seen more deaths just so they could prosecute their argument, but it didn't work out that way. How much damage has this uh, whole episode done to the live export industry, in your view? Look, you, you, you could say it's caused damage, and it, it certainly has, but at the same time, it's put in place, place protocols that will give us a social licence to keep doing this for a long, long time. And if change was necessary, this has happened. This is a very responsible report. It deals with the science, which we've always asked for, just the science. And I'm absolutely certain that if these changes are implemented, as they will have to be, that we won't see anything like the event that happened before.
So as far as you know, Tony Seabrook, uh, are there exporters and ships that shouldn't be in operation because of their animal welfare conditions and their history? Um, look, it will always depend on loading density. Um, the 17.5% reduction that's being applied now, the independent vet on board, and I'm absolutely certain that, that the owners of these stock will be far more cognizant of the fact they have a responsibility. Um, I don't know whether it's an individual ship thing. I'm not qualified to make that comment. But what I do understand quite clearly is that the exporters are now under the microscope and they will make absolutely certain, because of what will happen to them if they don't, that those sorts of events have happened in the past month. So I'm not qualified to make any remarks about what type of ship but the Awasi Express was put down as being a converted car transporter. A lot of remarks were made about it. It's had a lot of risk to avoid past and the ship. I'm very sure. All right, Tony Seabrook joining us uh, via Skype from York in WA. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, too.